assumed duties of a soldier involved in numerous battles and skirmishes with a fast advancing German war machine, go to battle on foot, driving armored vehicles, or flying a plane, use weapons not featured in any other game, and a feel-good nostalgic climate of the production like Medal of Honor, Allied Assault, or Call of Duty. This is how Land of War, the beginning, describes itself on Steam, poor English included. But does it live up to that? Okay, cool, cool. What the? F hey, this wall tastes like dirt. They're really hitting each other. <laughs> I went the wrong way, so I guess the game just kills me. Oh, oh my God, this is some sensitive tank. <laughs> Why is it so sensitive? Watch me- I can't move, by the way. This is still in the cutscene. I- I literally can't move. Finally. If I die because- Cool. Oh, not again. Hey, everyone. As always, Jarek here. I am a very curious person. If I see a first-person shooter that I've never seen before and it went under the radar, I might give it a go. It could only end in one of two ways. Either it's a surprisingly okay game, or it's complete garbage. You can take a guess how this game ended up. But before I explain why, I need to thank today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Into the AM. Into the AM makes high-quality apparel, and today they sent me four of their graphic t-shirts. Keep in mind, they make more than that, but this is just what they've sent me to show you. I specifically requested darker colors because I may like black and red a bit too much. I mean, it, it looks pretty sick though. As I said, these are their graphic tees, and again, they do come in more colors than just black, including pure white, if that's your thing. This one really amuses me. It tells me to stay inspired. I don't know what it's inspiring me to do. I guess get better at BMX, become an astronaut, and then do sick tail whips on the moon. Actually, a BMX tournament on the moon sounds pretty sick. It also glows in the dark for all of your after dark fantasies. Take that as you will. These don't have that slick sort of feeling that athletic shirts do. They're more of like soft cotton. They're also pretty thick, so I don't really worry about them tearing at all. They told me to be honest about the price and the shirts and all that stuff. Uh, the price did not wow me, but it also didn't immediately put me off. Graphic shirts generally end up being a little more expensive than they should be, but these seem to be priced well. They also currently have a bundle deal. You can get three graphic t-shirts for $60, or you can get three plain t-shirts for $45. These basic t-shirts are exactly what they sound like. They're just a solid color, black, white, red. You get the point. And hey, if you go to my link, intotheam.com slash dragon shirts, pretty sure none of the shirts have dragons on them, but it's easy to remember. If you can't remember, click that link down below in the video information or pinned comment. If you do use this link, you can get 10% off site-wide, which does stack on the bundle. Using my code will also get you a free month of their t-shirt club. So hey, big shout out and thanks goes to Into the AM for sponsoring this video. I guess let's quickly talk about the good, because I don't have much good to say. The guns are quite okay. The animations for said guns are better than in most other indie games, and the guns they chose are quite interesting. This game takes place during the Third Reich invasion of Poland, which is early in World War II a setting we rarely ever see in games. To take away all the credit I just gave about the guns, there's not many of them. Roughly around six or seven in the game. Unless you buy day one DLC to add more guns in the game. I'm not shitting you. This DLC will include a Thompson, which is pretty overpowered, and a Gaunt Revolver, which is probably the best pistol in the game, but nothing really to write home about. A pistol that I totally forget the name of, this thing's pretty bad. And an absolutely useless sword. This thing has way less reach than what it should, and it just does ass damage. It's a sword! Why is it so weak? This is also a game that's full of clown closets and enemies constantly pouring out of you that will instantly murder you, so there's never really a time you're gonna wanna use it anyway. Also, this game is 30 bucks. Why is this game 30 bucks? It's not worth 30 bucks, and why are you adding day one DLC on top of that $30 indie game that's not worth $30? How can an indie studio be this greedy? And so I began releasing every bit of frustration out of my brain during the time I streamed this game. If you want to join me in the future, my Twitch is twitch.tv slash jarek 4 dragon I stream every week. Don't let this bad game fool you, I do actually have a good time while streaming and love talking to you guys. But my god, this game was awful. Let's start with the graphics. They're not great, but for an indie game, they looked okay. However, the first red flag should have been the recommended specs. On Steam, under the recommended specs, it recommends that you have 16 gigabytes of RAM. 
for a game that looks like this? I guess it makes sense because it runs like ass. Keep in mind, I have 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and a 3080. It still runs awful. I even locked my frame rate to 60 FPS and it still stuttered like mad. To make things even worse, you can't even change the graphical settings when you're in game. You can only do it at the main menu. Why? These options a lot of the time don't even work anyway. For example, there's an option here that says motion blur. I put it to none and there's still clearly motion blur. So I went back to the main menu, changed it to very high and I noticed no difference. You cannot turn motion blur off in this game. And yes, before you ask, there is no FOV slider. The controls don't feel any better. I usually like my aiming sensitivity to be the same when I'm aiming down sights or when I'm doing hip fire. In this game, it's 50% when you aim down sights, meaning your aim slows down drastically when you aim. For a controller, this makes sense, but for mouse and keyboard, it's just really intrusive. But that's not all because you have very little options in this regard. Crouch is always toggle, no matter what and animations take forever before you can do anything out of them. You just stood back up in a trench and quickly want to crouch back down so you don't get shot? Well, you just have to sit there and wait until the game allows you to crouch again. It takes forever. This is legit as fast as you can crouch. That's it. There's also no prone, which would have been very useful in this game. The same sort of thing applies when you're swapping weapons or when you go to pull out a grenade. The time it takes for you to be able to throw that grenade after you pull it out is way too long. Overall, the whole game just feels clunky, slow, and awkward. The controls are hideous. Same thing can be applied to the vehicles, but I'll get to that, don't you worry. Anyway, I'd say the graphics are passable for an indie game, but it's unoptimized as all hell, and the controls are ass. So they're not good. Next up is the story. Surely they did something with this. I mean, we never see this part of World War II in games. How could they make it bad? Oh god, they managed. The most obvious thing is that the voice acting is awful. Oh. Matthew! No! I'll slaughter the lot of you! What's this? Some sort of gas? The mixing is also really bad. I have a hard time telling who's actually speaking. I don't know if my character is talking or the other characters are talking, and the lip syncing is so bad that it doesn't help. Admiral, sir. Private Kowalski. I was sent by the general staff. At ease, Private. We already received information that you are coming. However, there might be a problem with getting you airborne. Now, this game was made by a Polish studio, so they have Polish voice acting and English voice acting. Despite what you might assume, I don't speak Polish. A lot of people ask me if I'm Polish because of my name. I'm not. I'm Arabic. I get that question so much, I now can read, are you Polish in Polish? which is a weird question to be asking in Polish to begin with. Moral of the story, I'm not Polish. You can stop asking now, please. I get that comment more than I get requests for games. It's kind of absurd. Anyway, since I don't speak Polish, I don't know how good the Polish voice acting is. It might be great, but all I can talk about is that the English voice acting is awful. The tone is also all over the place. At the beginning of the game, you have this line. Shoot, kill, reload. The cycle repeats to no end. I cared less and less that the shots were aimed at other living beings who also had dreams, ambitions, just like me. I had to stop seeing them as people. <laughs> Wouldn't have been able to do it otherwise. Which is probably the only good voice acting in the entire game. You're stuck in a trench, fighting a German assault, it's raining all around you, it's suitably depressing, it's dark, it's World War II. The whole point here is that war is traumatic and terrible. But the very next level, you're a super soldier driving through German camps without worry. This level is 15 minutes of on a rail. You have no control over this car and you are quite literally just driving straight through German camps and in front of tanks and it's fine. The NPCs the entire time are acting like they just got lost and having a good time. Like, whoops, I turned left instead of right. Guess we got to go through this German camp and commit genocide. Oh, silly me. I'm so stupid. That's not even a threat. There we go. Okay, okay. Why are they so casual about this whole situation? What is this level? Anyway, I can't even begin to try to explain how bad the story is because it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't even start anywhere. It basically doesn't exist. It's just a game of a bunch of bad voice acting. <laughs> That's it. There is nothing to grasp or understand. So let's move on to the gameplay. 
and the whole game is basically Ramirez do this. I immediately was worried upon the very first moment of the first level. You spawn in a trench, you fight off a bunch of German soldiers, some tanks roll in so the command tells you go get on that gun and take care of the tanks. You go to one gun, it explodes just before you get there. You go to another gun, it explodes just before you get there. Then you go to a third gun and get rid of them. So far, no freedom, just an interactive movie. Well, it gets worse because not only is this just an interactive movie, it's an unpolished interactive movie. Anyway, mere minutes later, you move forward to a nap point, see some Germans in front of you, you shoot them, and then the game fails you and says load checkpoint. Uh, okay, all I've been doing up to this point is shooting Germans, and now you're telling me not to do that? You load the checkpoint to find out that your friendly NPC said to hide behind a truck first. Something he said far too late for me to react to it because I was already killing the Germans when he said it. Anyhow, we now hide behind this truck, the Germans walk by, and then you're allowed to kill them. Nothing else changes. That's it. You just couldn't kill them before they walked by. Why is it this scripted? A mere 20 feet forward, you find yourself under fire by a turret in a bunker. I do the reasonable thing and try to stay in its blind zones to try to get around it. But when I finally do get around it, the door won't open, nothing will happen, I can't do anything. As it turns out, since I didn't literally touch this nav point, nothing would happen. They still wanted me to do the same exact thing, but the path they wanted me to take was right in the middle of that turret, which would instantly melt you, and the turret doesn't seem to care at all about your friendly AI, just you. And that's a common thing you'll find in this game. Enemies will mow you down while ignoring your friendlies. And your friendlies are dog shit stupid. They're completely worthless and they never kill anyone. I die here a few times, finally get around the turret, decide to try to use a sword like an idiot, die, have to do it again, have enemies pop in front of me because instead of going into the bunker, I threw a grenade into it and killed the enemies I was supposed to kill, so then they spawned where they were supposed to spawn behind me. All right, that's cool. But now I finally got rid of this damn bunker. And this continues for the whole game. This is a good example as to why I don't like Call of Duty campaigns except for those are way more polished, so this is so much worse. If Call of Duty is an interactive Hollywood movie, then Land of War is an interactive B movie. And that comes with a lot of these situations. Do you see that nap point on the other side of that hill? Well, if you try to walk over that hill, you just randomly fucking die for no reason because you were actually supposed to walk around it. Did you walk a little too far forward before your NPC could explain that there was a sniper nearby? Well, just die, I guess. Like Watch me die. I can't move, by the way. This is still in the cutscene. Yeah, no shit. I, I literally can't move. Finally. If I die because- Cool. Very, very cool. Nice, good game. My god. What the- Alright! Cool! Oh, and remember what I said about the AI only focusing on you? Well, the AI are incredibly stupid. They're not so much AI as much as they'll just walk to a point, stand there, and shoot it only you. And they really are aimbots. It doesn't matter what's in the way, they're going to keep shooting at you. They can perfectly shoot you through smoke, but you'll have no idea where you're getting shot from. And God forbid if you leave an enemy alive while a cutscene starts, you're just gonna start getting shot during the cutscene. And this will fail you, and you'll have to load from the previous checkpoint. These enemies are so stupid that they will quite literally just stand in the open with no self-preservation while a tank rolls on by them. I mean, hell, they don't even throw grenades. The game is so scripted that certain grenades will pop out at certain times no matter how many times you play through it. That grenade will probably kill you the first time. So you load from checkpoint, walk back to that same spot. Of course, they're always going to throw a grenade there because it's that scripted. That's the kind of game Land of War is. And you're only going to be fighting these Germans the whole game with no variation. Except for one. We have vehicles. They're even worse. Let's start with the tank. Yeah, the controls are really sensitive for I don't know what reason, and the tank is pretty awkward to drive. They also decided to add in a mechanic where you can drown the engine. Look, water. Be careful not to flood the engine. Stick to the shallow areas. There's a visible wall here. That counts as being underwater. What? All right, well, I just got to go. I, well, rip. That's cool. That's a cool mechanic. Look, water. Be careful not to flood the engine. Wow! What the fucking bullshit? Why add that at all? Just end the level. Oh, but anytime there's a vehicle section, right after it, there's an on a rail section. Cause fuck pacing. There's nothing more fun than being stuck on the back of a tank and you can't control where you're going, so if you end up dying, it's not really your fault. And anytime you die, it's frustrating, not because the game is hard, but because you have to do it all over again. But to make things even better, right after this tank section, it goes straight to a plane section. Because again, 
fuck pacing. And this is some of the most boring dogfighting I've ever had to play. First off, the controls are way too simple. The controls are quite literally hold forward to go faster, hold back to go slower, and control with your mouse. This would be fine, except for the plane will barrel roll as it pleases. You have no control over the plane spinning. I guess they wanted to keep this simple, but it made it more difficult to fly this way. Either way, this just boils down to doing spins around another plane until you can eventually shoot it and then just shooting some other German planes. Then you have to shoot some enemies on the ground and then it shifts to an on a rail section. This one lasted the longest and was the most boring of them all. You're stuck in a plane shooting some enemies on the ground, then you're shooting some more planes, and then you once again have to shoot more enemies on the ground. It lasts like 20 minutes. Just on a rail, in a plane, doing this for 20 damn minutes. And keep in mind, this was after the tank section, then the on a rail tank section, and then the plane section, and then the on a rail plane section. What is this pacing? But finally, you should be at the last level of the game. And this one is the least polished of them all. I frequently would only be getting 30 to 40 FPS on my 3080. And it's not a computer problem. If you look at the reviews, that's a pretty common thing. This game is not optimized at all. Anyway, this last level is the mother of all clown closets. The whole level can be summarized with Ramirez, go defend this. Ramirez, go defend that. Ramirez, go defend this. And it lasts for an hour. Every time you go to one of these objectives, you never know what the hell you're supposed to do. You don't know if you're supposed to kill a certain amount of Germans, put explosives on something. It does not really explain itself. So normally you just sit there and shoot mindless AI as they run in over and over again. This is where I should probably explain that the AI can absolutely melt you. Not only that, but your health only regenerates up to 50%. Then you need to use a med kit to get back up to 100%. So typically you're only going to be a few bolts away from dying. To make this even worse, this game has an unreasonable amount of screen shake. You can turn the screen shake down, keep in mind down, not off, but every time the game loads, it turns it back up. But also it has an unreasonable amount of flinch. When you get shot, it feels like you're being stun locked. And since enemies are aimbots that will frequently run around corners pre-firing, you are going to be looking at the sky. This feels bad, it is bad. I question if anyone playtested this. Oh, and right about only two or three minutes away from the end of the game, the final level soft locked on me and I couldn't continue. Why couldn't have you a soft lock earlier in the game so I didn't have to play this shit? Yeah, I legit just couldn't do anything. The game wanted me to go into this door, but that objective just wouldn't happen. And if I reloaded from checkpoint, it still wouldn't happen. Restarting the level might have fixed it, but fuck that, I can't be arsed. So I just looked up a walkthrough of the game, and here's the final ending. Alright, skip forward more, because all he's doing is just defending here. Keep going. More sniping, nothing of note. And then you just commit suicide, that's just the end of the game. Alright, cool, what a waste of time. And that is how I came to be in this place. There is no more hope. At least, I don't see it anymore. Hell, the last stronghold of freedom. I don't know if this is the end. But if you're reading this, it probably is. What the fuck kind of an end was that? Needless to say, this game is not worth $30, and it's not polished enough to even be released on Steam. This game is an absolute mess of bad game decisions and a lack of polish. Do not waste your money or time on this game. It is absolutely not worth it. And I left a lot out. There's so much more I could explain on how bad this game is, but it's really not worth that time. This will suffice. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I suffered so you didn't have to. Actually, it's just because I'm way too curious for my own good. Either way, I do hope you enjoyed watching me I, I, I'm done with this game. I can't think anymore. I hope you enjoyed the video. That's what I'm trying to say. Thanks to everyone that enjoyed watching me die over on stream. My Twitch is twitch.tv slash jr 4 dragon If you subscribe, you can see my videos ahead of time. Of course, a big thanks goes to today's sponsor, Into the AM. Check that link down below in the video information. And as always, thank you for watching this video.